The state House and Senate voted to override the governor's veto of a bill to ban gender affirming care. But they didn't muster the votes for two other bills that were being closely watched. Meg Gatto explains. All along, it was thought that if any veto was overridden, it would be House Bill 648. And that's what happened. Colleagues, House Bill 648 simply protects children in Louisiana from harm by ending the use of experimental and irreversible chemical and surgical medical procedures on children suffering from a mental health condition called gender dysphoria where children experience discomfort with their biological sex. It takes away parental rights. I'll repeat that. It takes away parental rights. We've heard the term parental rights repeatedly throughout session and even today. And so what this bill does, it states that parents don't know what's in the best interest of their children. Hundreds of people packed the House gallery and had to be repeatedly admonished about outbursts. New Orleans Representative Mandy Landry stopped to address them when commenting on House Bill 648. I actually have a lot of friends in here um, who are trans, who I've been working with and a lot of us have been working with this year. and. I can't imagine how nervous and afraid they are constantly walking in this building knowing there are people in here who actually want to hurt them and who want them to leave the state. It's just weird. Go ahead. I respect y'all. You need to respect the people in this room too. Soon after, the GOP-controlled House upheld House Bill 648 on a vote of 75 to 23, the Senate began debating it on the other end of the state capitol building. And just before 5 p.m., the Senate also voted to override the veto of that bill. There were three highly watched bills as this veto override session began. Besides House Bill 648, House Bill 81 was vetoed, which would require teachers to refer to students with pronouns that align with the name on their birth certificate, unless parents gave permission to do otherwise. It did not get enough votes to become law, nor did House Bill 466, which critics call the Don't Say Gay Bill, because it would have outlawed any discussion of sexual or gender identity in classrooms. We spoke to a Democratic and Republican senator as the veto override session came to an end on its first day. That They sent over three bills to the Senate, and I'm glad that only one of them got out, but really none of the bills should have been, there, should have been voted to overturn the governor's veto. I'm absolutely disappointed in that. Well, I think it's a little bit like we expected. I think the, the ferment bill was the bill that people had the most energy around. In a statement, Governor Edwards said, Today I was overridden on my veto of a bill that needlessly harms a very small population of vulnerable children, their families, and their health care professionals. I expect the courts to throw out this unconstitutional bill as well. And that was Meg Gatto reporting. Families who currently rely on that health care access are left in limbo, unsure of their options now that the legislation is set to become law. Maddie Kurth joins us to break down what is next for the bill. That's right, guys. The veto override required a 60 percent majority in both the state house and Senate chambers. With the final tallies coming in, the Stop Harming Our Kids Act now law prohibits certain procedures to alter the gender of a minor child, including puberty blockers, hormone treatments, and gender reassignment surgery for patients under 18. But Dillard University political analyst Dr. Robert Collins says the law will still have hurdles to jump before going into effect on January 1st. Advocacy groups are likely to challenge the law's constitutionality in the court system, and we've seen this play out in Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee, where district court judges at least grant a stay on the legislation, essentially meaning a pause pause until the trial is completed. Now, Planned Parenthood, one of the advocacy groups in strong opposition to the law, says they're planning to be involved in the law beyond today's session. Hey, I, I think the fat lady has sung on these issues, at least for this year. I'm quite sure we'll see 
this ban on transgender health care for minors go to the courts, as we've seen in other states. But in the interim, what does that mean? So anyone who's looking for a gender affirming care in Louisiana today, it is still legal and it will be still legal until January 1st. And in all likelihood, the federal court will will go ahead and grant the stay. And so it will it will continue to be legal until such a time that we can have a court hearing. Now that's for that law. Lawmakers failed to produce the vetoes to overturn Edwards' vetoes of two other bills related to LGBTQ issues, one of which would have prevented discussion of sexual orientation in classrooms and another requiring teachers to use only the birth names and pronouns of students. Now, though, Dr. Collins says he isn't surprised by those failures and that conservative legislators would still consider this session a win for their party. He adds that the focus was always on this specific piece of legislation.